Hi everybody, it's Dr. Modi Charter again, back again for another hoot. This time it's Saturday, relaxing at my house. Tomorrow's Sunday, I work week in Israel, Sunday to Thursday, unlike in most of the world, Monday to Friday. So relaxing today, tomorrow I'm going to go back to the field season. So enjoying the free time, fresh air, beautiful day. Um, so today I want to talk a little bit about why we monitor these barn owls and what do we do. So we do this basic monitoring for years. And um, sometimes we have specific studies within a one or two years or three year studies, but then we have also the basic monitoring. Now the basic monitoring is very important because it'll show us changes, fluctuation in the population number during the years. Um, so for example, if I want to ask a question like, uh, does um, barn owl breeding change according to changes in weather? Uh, so this is something I can do only in long term using a long term data set. These we've done these things in the past, and even recently we participated in a very large uh, meta analysis, a study throughout the world with many many researchers with climate change, uh, which was very interesting and it's a, a huge study uh, of 104 different researchers throughout the world, 210 breeding population. We provided data with barn owls, 15 years of data. And in that study, what was found actually, just to get it, getting sidetracked, um, it was found that um, uh, larger birds that migrate, uh, they, the number of nestlings they produce has decreased with, with the change in climate. Uh, whereas the smaller birds that are, uh, do not migrate, their breeding numbers actually increase. So I think it was 57% of the birds had a decreased number in production of number of nestlings. Uh, so there was a negative side of the climate change. Um, but as you know, climate change does not happen from one year to the next. So you have to monitor the birds over many, many years, uh, which is hard work. And, and unfortunately, uh, most people don't stick with it because it's, it's to monitor a bird over many years is, is extremely difficult. And our site uh, is it's even more difficult because of the heat. May 7th, instead of sweating in the middle of the sun, I'm freezing in rain. I don't know about this global warming, but it's cold out. It's completely crazy. Barn owl breeding season 2023, here we go. Uh, we work in, sun, in the sun and sweat and very complicated. Uh, so our basic, basic monitoring, for at least for us, is we want to know if a nest box is occupied. Uh, what species, uh, even though they're barn owl boxes, other species breed in them. Uh, then we want to know um, how many uh, eggs were laid, how many nestlings hatched, and how many nestlings fledged. So to do this, we go to a nest. Um, the first time we, we go, the female may be incubating. In that case, we do not capture females that are incubating. We leave her alone. Uh, and then we wait uh, and we do capture the females, but we typically do it do so only when the nestlings are slightly little bit older. We want the eggs to hatch. We, my main goal is to keep the disturbance to a minimum. So uh, I always say uh, I leave the barn owls the way I found them. So if I come to a box and there's a female barn owl incubating or a female barn owl brooding with her nestlings, she's going to stay in that box when I leave. So if a barn owl flies from a box because of an action that I did, for me that's a big no-no and I try to keep that to a minimum and, and if it happens for me it destroys a whole day in a week. So after years and years of experience, nothing high tech related, uh, we, we, we found a way to work with these barn owls that keep our disturbance to a minimum uh, and we go in, we, after one of, one of the main things is counting the number of fledglings that fledged because that's a sign of production. How many do they end up fledging? Which completely varies with these barn owls. In our study site it's between one or zero to 11. 11 is the maximum number. Uh, this year there's been, I think, uh, one peer with 11 nestlings. I'm not sure if they'll fledge 11 nestlings. Um, and, and we, in, in that, I think the mean number of, of fledglings is something between around 4.5.4 .4 nestlings per peer fledge, which is a huge number, believe it or not, uh, which is much higher than most places in the world as an average, meaning there's some that fledge one and there's others that fledge eight, nine, ten. And as I said, even few fledge 11. So we keep this up over time. Uh, this is what we're doing now. 
This year, we're not doing a specific scientific study with the barn owls, so we're just doing the basic monitoring. Uh, all the nestlings receive a ring. One has identification number. The other has the RFID tags. We, we attach to a plastic uh, ring the pit tag or uh, uh, it's RFID. It's basically very similar to the chip that you put in your dogs for rabies. Um, so we, we keep all these nestlings and most of the adults ringed. Uh, that's in case, like next year when we will start another study, with the most of the population will be ringed. It's always uh, a difficult thing to do because there's an influx. Barnals do not live too long, uh, and sometimes they die uh, very frequently. Actually, the nestlings themselves, the majority of them, um, uh, 75% around die within their first year. And those that make it to adulthood, they live probably a few years uh, I think the, our, um, the record in Israel is 16 years about how lived in nature. The motor birds don't even reach close to that. Uh, in, in a great place like our study site where there's lots of food, there's also sometimes natural diseases, uh, even influenza, new castles that can wipe out a, a large number of the breeding population. But it's truly amazing how... We have these barn owls that come from different areas and immediately take over those sites and breed. So this is what we're doing this year. We're ringing these nestlings. We we weigh them. We take a, a wing measurement. A wing measurement is actually more important than weighing them because weighing depends on the time of the day and whether they ate something. So if a barn owl ate a a, a vole, a 50 gram vole, so he's got obviously be 50 grams heavier. So weight fluctuates greatly in a de 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 day, depends on what they ate, whereas wing length is more the indication of age. It grows, uh, uh, the barnals grow in a specific way, so you take a wing length and you can estimate the age of the nestling. So uh, wing length is very important because when we first go, if we miss the uh, hatching date, we can determine the hatching date. Typically we're able to know by the number of nestlings because barnals nestlings hatch one nestling every other day. Uh, um, but then we can determine when I need to go back. We go back uh, to ring the nestlings when the oldest nestling is 53 days. We specifically pick 53 days. We've been doing this for years because the barn owls can uh, um, fly around 60 days. So we want to, um, uh, the 53 days, we're going to come a little bit before they can fly because we don't want to flush them from the box either. Um, and then we record it again and see if there's any um, nestlings that died uh, between the ringing and the fledging period. So that's basically it for the, the monitoring. It's super hard work. It's so hard that me, I'm doing it myself. Uh, uh, Amir, our head technician, uh, is doing it. Uh, we're not young guys anymore. Uh, believe it or not, I'm 46 in a couple of days. So, uh, but I love it every year, the change from working in front of a computer all day, writing articles, analyzing data with students, all this other stuff for working a few months outside is unbelievable. Uh, I don't go to a psychologist, maybe that's instead of uh, treatment. It's just kind of working outside, difficult environment, very physical work. Most people don't like it, I love it. I completely love it. Also, I get in a little shape, lose a little, my beer belly goes down a little bit. Yes, I like beer, uh, it's a problem. Not that, no, not a big problem, but I do like my beer and um, I've had very, I had an extremely difficult time actually finding students. Most students don't want to work in that physical environment. Yes, they would love to see a barn out here, but they don't want to work outside eight, nine uh, hours in the sun. That becomes a little bit too much. But me, and luckily I have a mirror. We do it every year and it's a pleasure. Love it. Um, So that's basically a summary of what we do with our basic uh, monitoring. I uh, hope you like this video. Uh, like, comment. Of course, if you have not subscribed, 
Keep on watching and hoot you later.